All right. Week one, week one of the Hop Street Esports Draft League Season 2 is in the books, and we had seven very exciting matches happen. This is Cygnus here with my co-commentators and fellow League staff members. Uh, this is Daniel. This is Armando. We are gaming, or we are watching gaming. Past tense gaming and present tense watching. Hmm. Yeah. There are some very interesting matches this week, so I'm really excited to commentate on them as I'm going into this live, largely blind. Yeah, same here. I'm go. Uh, other than my match, just hearing a couple things, I I'm basically blind here. Yeah, and, start, and starting off, we have our very own Armando uh, up against Swamp Boss. The fe that that's the Phoenix Proteans against Persona Furret. Looking at this team preview here, we see the Phoenix Proteans bringing in Greninja, Ursaring, Heatran, Cleavor, Galarian, Weezing, and Driftblim, and Persona Furret bringing in. The mascot Furret, Alolan Ninetales, Iron Boulder, Yuxi, Roaring Moon, and Jirachi. What are you guys got? Armando, you're the one who played this match. So, so, so Daniel, from the outside looking in, what are your thought thoughts on these team teams brought by the respective players? I think some of the Pokemon that Armando has brought in are very interesting choices. And I feel like, um, I feel like this would be kind of a Stereotypical, maybe not stereotypical, but like uh, a kind of cookie cutter choice compared uh, with Swamp Boss's team, except for maybe that current choice. I feel like Uxi, uh, Nine Tails, Iron Boulder, uh, Roaring Moon, and Jirachi are kind of like what you should expect from Swamp Boss, but obviously, this is the first week, so not everyone is pre prepared for everything, and not everyone has seen any matches from each player so exactly yeah. yeah just this is the point where just everything is such an unknown yeah yeah uh going in the main thing i was worried was because iron boulder just outspeeds greninja which is my fastest pokemon so either i have to get battle bond off or i have to hope he didn't max speed into it uh and the only hazard remover i see out of the six was fur and i'm like hmm very peculiar. I might have to take advantage of that. But. Yeah, that's the general flaw in Swamp Plus's team, though. He only I mean, has that one for it to remove hazard, as far as I remember. Yeah, that Cleavor is looking mighty valuable into this team. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll, I'll just play it. I do find it interesting how, on week one, your first round pick of uh, Rillaboom was not, is not featured. Uh, I did consider bringing Rillaboom, but I just felt like into Ninetales, it just wasn't going to do very much compared to yeah. like some of the other Pokemon that I feel like had value. But he'll get his time to shine. Maybe not for a week or two, but eventually. Yeah. Yep. All comes in due time. Yeah, obviously it depends on what Pokemon you're fighting against and what Pokemon they have, so... Yeah, we have Cleavor and Yuxi as the respective leads. Teams and the Uxie immediately piv pivots out with a U turn going into Jirachi. Me too. <laughs> the double pivot lead. Being slower is actually advantageous there. Yeah, oh, definitely for that situation because you get to yeah. know what you're switching into. And that Greninja gets a nice Dark Pulse off. That gets the turn two flinch. Yeah, basically, basically stealing Jirachi at its own game there since, uh, Sirachi, yeah, Serene Grace. I feel kind of known for Serene Grace. Once, pretty much. Yeah, so and Greninja got, got the first kill of this yeah. match, which proc Battle Bond as a Lowland Ninetales now in, and it does get to set up in Aurora Veil, but that also gives g gives just the opportunity for Toxic Spikes. But that Roar sends that out, out, out the Galarian Weezing with its neutralizing gas. That Sludge Bomb does a pretty sizable amount, considering that Aurora Veil's up. <laughs> Both of these roars another, are just so unfortunate, too. <laughs> another roar sends in Cleavor. Not what you want to see here. <laughs> if you're Swamp Boss. Oh, I'm the miss. Tragic. Very unfortunate, Miss Stone Axe. But that is a lot of turns of Aurora Veil down. And Heatran's not going to take anything from that freeze dry. Good switch there. 
Yeah. <laughs> that day was the day it's I learned you can roar through substitute. <laughs> yeah, roar is a sound move, so it's very interesting. Yeah. And out comes the Greninja. Finds the life orb on Greninja, but it is poisoned by the toxic spikes. That's a surprising amount of bulk into that surf, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not, not to take two plus poison. Yeah. Um, Swamp Long has removal of an like dead here, so it's very in interesting to see him try to play around now that all the Pokemon are badly poisoned. Or will be badly poisoned. Yeah, these toxic spikes are gonna put it put in a lot of work. I why he went for four, just wanting to get them off the field. Yeah, Greninja just kind of gets to click moves, and I I don't really care if Greninja survives at this point because I just get a free switch into something better. So I'm just I'm just yeah. letting it rip. And then Trick gives Greninja a choice scarf in exchange for that life orb. Which kind of works in my favor, because now I'm faster than Iron Boulder, <laughs> regardless. True, yeah. But Memento just tanks your attacking stats. Uh, as Yuxi goes down. And here's the boulder. It is badly poisoned, though. And that Dark Pulse is not doing much to it. When Swampaw started swords dancing, I got very scared. I'm like, uh, uh, I didn't calc for this. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> Understandably so, especially with Dark Pulse just not doing much here with that Aurora Veil up. And down goes Greninja. Uh, the first fainted Pokemon on, on Normando's side. But the Ursaren comes out. His Terra Captain, which goes Terra Ground! Yeah, trying to avoid that Brick Break. Pretty smart there. And then Earthquake and getting the, getting the kill on Boulder here. Yeah, and out comes Roaring Moon setting up a Dragon Dance with one turn left on Aurora Veil. They take that one Ice Punch well, sitting at 61% HP. The knockoff dealing massive damage and getting rid of the Eviolite, but will it be enough? Yeah, Ice Punch just No, it is not. Aurora Veil. Yep, all that's left is a weak Nine Tail. It'll 17% health and poisoned. Yeah, well, and Ninetales is just on a timer here, and with Heatra in there, it's just no, it's yeah. going to die a painful excruciating Yeah, crash. there's there's nothing you can really do to break through that Heatra. And that is game. Scrumptious takes it with a with a score of five to one. Or wait, was it five one? Yeah, uh, it's six one. Or er mm -hmm. Oh yeah, six months. But yeah, but only five kills for Mondo because of Memento. Yeah. Sag, Sag. It could have been six. Yep. Yeah. If I were Garmondo, I probably would not have stayed in as Greninja after the Memento, because so that way you keep your Choice Scarf and you can get rid of your developing stat mm -hmm. changes. Yeah. Okay, I, I, the only reason I stayed in was because Iron Boulder kind of just gets to click moves in front of my whole team because nothing other than Greninja outspeeds it. And I knew that Ursaring could live at least plus two. I calculated it could have lived to plus four. So I was fine to stay in with Greninja and just sack it off and just switch to something safer. Because if not, then I just lose okay, more Bob. Pokemon for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. On, is there a slower speed on the showdown? But by, 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 the, by the way, I mean, I like that we were able to speed through. I just felt there was like very little time to like analyze things before like the next big things were happening. Hmm. I can make the next match really slow. <laughs> See if that helps. I guess, yeah, I just think it can make for like a smoother commentary experience. Hmm. All right, here we have Denny versus Taboo. And you see the Golden Gold Glamora combo and uh, the Ostrich looming in the yep. back. Yep, yeah, my team, the Magical Mayhem, came in with 
came in with a team of six featuring Haunter, Darkrai, Metagross, Galarian, Sloking, Latias, and Ditto up against the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on, coached by Taboo, running Espathros, Greentail, Golden Go, Grimmsnarl, Gl Glamora, and Okie Dogie. Uh, as I was one of the players, uh, players uh, on this side, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on these six. Yeah, the, the two cores of Grimstone Alice Bathar and Golden Go Glamora are just deadly, let alone on their own. So together, they're an unstoppable powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Or at least it feels that way. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, what are your thoughts looking at this, Armando? Looking at it, I, and knowing how many kills Metagross gets, I see, I see why. I mean, you got... What's it called? Okie dogie being quad weak to psychic. Uh, uh, what's it called? Why am I blanking on names? There's just like three different, four different Pokemon that just get annihilated by Metagross. Two different stabs, you know, Grimstar, Steel. Uh, why am I forgetting this dude's little name? Glamora. Glamora. Oh my God. Yeah, Glamora. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blanking there, but yeah, getting hit by a psychic doesn't want to get hit by that. Uh. Golden God is one hit by an earthquake from Metagross. Which is a lot of the team is Metagross weak. Uh, other than like Spather, I guess, but Yeah, and yeah I definitely and knew Hunter. Metagross was something I wanted to bring in, and I was very excited to use the pivot power of Galarian Sloking as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Metagross does go pretty well into this team. I'd say the only thing it really has to deal with. Or maybe a uh, Golden Go or a Spot or Shadow Ball. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, let's see how the match goes. Here we go. Beginning the match, we see our leads of Galarian Sloking alongside <laughs> Glamora. I say what a pretty surprise. predictable lead here <laughs> on both sides. And the Stealth Rock immediately coming out from Glamora. Alongside Toxic Spikes. So both both of us setting up hazards early on. Mm -hmm. More more hazards coming out. Yeah, looking back, I probably spent like one turn too many before I pivoted, really. <laughs> mm. Because as we see, there's Stealth Rock and two layers of spikes that are down on the field right now. I forget, did you have a Psychic move on this thing? Uh, future, future Sight. sight. Uh. And out comes the star of the show, Metagross. Or, my star at least. <laughs> yeah, because uh, is Lamora's just getting everything out pretty much. Yeah. I, I play too slow to start, definitely. But this Earthquake is great, Ooh. but Glamora is sashed, letting the Toxic Debris come out, too. I mean, the Toxic Debris would have come out whether it lived or not, but... Yeah. The... But provided Future Sight wasn't up, it would have gotten two layers of Toxic Spikes instead of just one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, although I wasn't too concerned about Toxic Spikes overall, given that I had Sloking. It was more the other hazards that were worrying me. Yeah. Yeah, the Regenerator kind of being... Doing almost, doing almost 40% of the health. It's just so crazy to deal with, especially if you lack sufficient removal. Yeah, I knew hazards were a big deal, but as a, a non-native singles player, I was surprised by just how much that added up. <laughs> Especially when that you're switching way more in singles than double, those can really add up very quickly. In this Grim Snarl would, would just prove to be a, a nuisance too with its prankster dual screens access. I was trying to build just to survive a, a lot of hazards, having like Black Sludge and Leftover. Er, over on things like regenerator on sloking. Yeah, I will say honestly, I feel like sloking just hasn't contributed that much because I feel like yeah, no. it, both of the things has been in front of, for the most part, it kind of just let them set up for free, 
to get like no damage off. Yeah, but by playing right now, I was definitely like playing too slow. I think looking back, mm -hmm. I needed to push the pace more against this team. Yeah, this our Tabu's team can just snowball really quickly if you let it set up too much. Yeah. There goes the chili reception back out into Metagross. Yeah, taking like 30% on switching is just, it's rough. Yeah, I didn't realize it was going to add up quite that much. Yeah, three layers of spikes dealing a quarter of your health each time you switch in is just awful to deal with sometimes. Ooh, clear body. Yep, thankfully party shot was denied there. Oh, it just doesn't oh. let you switch out. Oh. No, yeah, I it thought doesn't. it just wouldn't remove yeah. the stats. Oh. That's interesting. Then it just denies the move entirely. <laughs> yeah, a really fun uh, interaction with parting shot that I've found that I figured that I found <laughs> is with the ability magic bounce. Uh, this is unrelated, <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh! <laughs> if you use parting shot on an opponent that has magic bounce, uh, you get your stats lowered. And the opponent gets a free switch, which I feel is really <laughs> funny sometimes. That that is pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, this encore was really annoying for me because I brought in out Metagross because I have psychic things on it. So I was just waiting till Grimstar wasn't on the field and I was gonna get rid of the screens. Mm. But that encore didn't let me do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean thankfully Iron Head is still getting rid of Scream Kill. Yeah. And I do have a 2-0 mon advantage at this point. I am surprised yeah. uh, Tabu didn't switch into Golden Go with Iron Head locked in. And just kind of let Screamtail die for free, pretty much. Yeah, and yeah, it still doesn't come in as Okidogi comes out here instead. Granted, Iron Head doesn't do that much into Okidogi with Reflect Up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh-oh. And yeah, bulk up scary. <laughs> yeah, I feel like bulk up's not gonna help when you're quad weak to psychic. Yeah, and light screen and encore both wore off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was just able to get rid of, of reflect and there. and yeah, breaking through the reflect and even with the bulk up, just psychic fangs just as so much into okie Mm-hmm. This is when the golden go. Made his mark here. I'm surprised you so stayed in. Bad. Yeah, I think I was just thinking, thinking Metagross is c contributing a lot. I have a lot else to, to fall back on. I'll just do as much damage as I can while I'm here and just keep it out as long as possible was my thinking. That's right. Ooh, that's that's right. I also thought Bullet Punch would let me sneak the KO, but 2% short. Yeah. You probably might have rolled a bit low on one of your moves, and that probably might have caused yeah, I was... some bad things to happen on your end. Yeah, I was counting on that bullet punch getting that kill. And yeah, I figured that was pretty free, because, like, worst case scenario, he'd switch into Grim Snarl, Snarl there against that. Mm hmm. I guess that I figured by going for Shadow Ball, I could also just cover for the S Pathra switch in. Yeah, that's smart. The screens are coming back. Yeah, that's the thing with letting it's called Metagross go down, is now you have nothing to remove screens with. Yeah, and honestly, I felt that I probably didn't have enough that could like really like go against Grimmsnarl well in this matchup. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have two other poison types. There are two, two yeah. including um, Sloking. There's just not a lot of coverage on them. Right, right yeah, my Hunter w was Ghost Terror with more of a focus on Shadow Ball. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Shadow Ball right now, yeah. Ooh. Uh, That's unfortunate. Yeah, and that miss was very, un very unfortunate. <laughs> That's the path was poisoned, and yeah, 
As Path was scary, I was like, oh, Ogre could take it out here. And yeah, Calm Mind was kind of yikes. <laughs> and I think this is where I had a pretty bad brain fart. <laughs> Yeah, also, it getting Dazzling Gleam really scared me. Aww. And yeah. Aww. Yeah. A failure. Oof. Well, it's poisoned. Yeah, I'm really more than it's a poisoned damage. Pokemon. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that. That hurt a lot. <laughs> and at this point, I was just terrified of this thing right now. And I would just figured I'd use Slowking to just switch into a Gleam. But then Speed Boost was just building up, just making it more and more terrifying. And I just wasn't able to do enough damage, really, with those combines and Light Screen up. Mm hmm. With Kaman pl plus Light Screen, I wonder if I went for Dark Pulse instead of Hypnosis. How much would that have done, I wonder? It would have done enough to where I think either Haunter or Ditto comes in to threaten the KO. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah I, I didn't pick it because I was like, oh, I probably wouldn't do that much with the screens in Calm Mind. But then I forgot it was poisoned. <laughs> And then out come the stored powers. <laughs> yeah. Stored power with this many boosts just kind of shreds whatever Pokemon it's up against. Unless it's a dark type. Yeah, but if I send out a, a, a dark ride, then I'm just vulnerable to Gleam. Yeah. So Ditto's my one chance, but I forgot that Ditto copy stat boosts. So I was like, it's poisoned, I'll use Protect, because I don't think I could outspeed it. <laughs> <laughs> Danny. <laughs> I was very dumb there. Yeah, I don't know how you didn't notice that you got... I realized, I realized right after I clicked it. I realized uh, right after I clicked it. That sucks. And now I yeah. think Ditto dies to just switching in, no? Yeah, it does. Oof. Yeah, if I remember the statues and I just press Dazzling Gleam there, I think I just win. Mm -hmm. Because I Gleam probably takes out his Pathro, if not on his own, with help from Poison, and then, and then I have Ditto, Darkrai, then I have a Ditto, Dispathro, Darkrai, and Latias all to go into Grip Snarl. Yeah. But it can do a close here. <laughs> yeah, even with like uh, taboo scary comps, you were just like essentially two mistakes cost you the game. You were like yeah, I know. In the yeah, game you too. had him on the back foot for a good bit there. Yeah, I'm glad I played it as well as I did for a while, but just just dumb just lapses in judgment really, and just me being dumb cost me. <laughs> Yeah, that and I think uh, Galarian Slowking didn't like provide enough pressure to warrant staying out. Yeah, definitely play too slow early on. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you see, there's a lot of showdown chat about. It. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate, but it was still close. So. Yeah. One or two mistakes, you clean up next time. You got it next time. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, how do we feel about the speed on that, by the way? Uh, it felt alright. It was fine. It felt a little slower, slower in the beginning because it was just hazards, but I think it would be better yeah. for the next ones. Yeah. So yeah, here, looking at our next match now, we have... We have the Drunken Dracovish, coached by Joe, up against Rose Tinted Lenses, coached by Marcus. 
the the drunken Dracovish are bringing in Scyther, Corviknight, Gouging Fire, or Gouging Fire, Permarina, Chinchino, and Alolan Golem. And the Rose Tinted Lenses are countering this with Quaquavel, Volcarona, King Gambit, Gargan Garganackle, Landorus Incarnate, and Vivian. What do you guys think? Hmm. I think both teams are pretty scary, honestly. Um, yeah. Marcus has a lot more obvious offensive threats here, though, with Quackleval, uh the two Quiver Dance sweepers with Volcarona and Vivian, as well yeah. as ever prevalent King Gambit just getting more and more powerful as Joe kills more of his Pokemon. Yeah, although uh, although Gambit does not have access to Terra in this draft league, though. Yeah, but still, Which, that's Supreme Overload. There's single players who may be watching this yeah. point. You're still yeah. eating a Supreme Overload, like, Sucker Punch. <laughs> so, it's still gonna hurt Terra or not. Yeah, and Joe doesn't necessarily have any fighting types, either. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing really wants to be in the 1v1 other than, I guess, Gouging Fire. Yeah, I mean, Gouging Fire does definitely threaten it a lot, especially with just Burning Bulwark, just being able to put that put a burn onto it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, start it out. Yeah, here we go. Primarina we lead. see Joe leading with Primarina and and Marcus leading Landorus. <laughs> I like his name on that, Doria. <laughs> nice. Yep, starting with, rocks. Yeah, starting with rocks. Pretty standard. And Combine for Primarina. I've to go for a stat setup rather than hazards to start. Yeah. Ooh, the sludge bomb. The the coverage. Sludge bomb. Dealing a lot for being into a calm mind. Yeah. Landers is a pretty good special threat. Especially oh, after definitely. Got yeah. access to nasty plot this time. Yeah, and against it and against this team with like Corvin and Gadget Fire, having good special threats is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then that calm mind boosted surf just one shots it. And Primarina picks up the first KO of the match. Now it's v Vivian coming out, Marcus's Terra Captain. Oh, the sleep powder. Ooh. Very interesting play there. <laughs> just disrupting, forcing him either to just take attacks in his already weakened state or switch out and lose the Calm Mind boost and eat the Stealth Rocks while at it. And Joe opts to switch into Corviknight tonight now, which could definitely remove these hazards, but Vivian is now able to just set up with Quiver Dance. Yeah, Corviknight does have access to, like, a stab brain bird for him, so Marcus should still be scared of that. Except yeah, he goes well, a ghost. Ah, uh, for body press. That's cool. Even yeah, though it's I probably like going to break bird, but still, I like that. Gets rid of your weakness oh, too. Oh, Brave Bird's yeah, well, a lot there. Yeah, it's able to live without it being super effective now. Still not sure Vivian can really like do too much though, especially with Sleep Claws. Ooh, not letting him. The Ghost Terror Blast, I like that, but it doesn't pick up the KO though. Yeah, no. Yeah, did a hefty sixty-one percent though. Put some good damage in, but unfortunately not quite enough. Yeah, Corviknight. If it's running a Body Press set, it's probably like max HP and max Special Defense. And then not worry about defense because you can body press anyways with iron defense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, the Quavo though picks up a KO here. It's gonna start to set up real quick, and it does. And it does with the quick use of an Aqua Stab, also boosting its speed. Speed. This Quavo, as of now, looks set up really well to do some hefty damage. Hmm. Yeah, Golem does not want to eat one of these, but it's probably his Terra Captain. Oh, yeah, and is. a strong Terra flying. Very interesting there. Well, this thing's packing a strong electric move. 
takes that aqua step pretty damn well. Ooh, now defense. it's gonna take it even better. Ooh. Yeah. That basically pretty much nullifies the moxie boost. Yeah, Marcus would kinda need to rely on a crit here to just eat through those defenses, but and the leftovers like he and the leftovers yeah. healing. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if a lot there. I wonder if Coquavel's banded. Is there a way it to check? Be. No, it is leftovers. Yeah, just. Oh right, yeah. My bad. <laughs> no, I didn't even notice I had leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> I was too the enthralled body by press Does the job. Very well played by Joe using his flying terra golem here to mm -hmm. getting very good use out of it, it, its iron defense and terra to 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 just mitigate that moxie boost really well. Fire dance giving the at speed and just killing Ooh, there. Getting the boost as well. Yeah, Volcarona his like what if Quaquavel was special and had quiver dance? <laughs> And Chinchino is coming in to face it now. As Volks doesn't like the matchup, subs out for Garganackle, which so just, just takes that rock glass well. well yeah. yeah. Smart switching, smart switching. I hit four times. Is it not skill link? No. Oh, technician, I guess, probably. It could be loaded dice. Technician loaded mm. dice is. Bullets, yeah, that's man. probably yeah, that's probably what he's running. And so that bullet seed does a lot to the Garg. Ooh, we got the salt cure. Yeah, so if I'm Marcus, I think I think of switching here. Mm -hmm. Maybe into King Gamut? Yeah, because it takes both of them. Yep, yeah. just as we said it. In Supreme Overlord, Overlord gives it a boost with three teammates having fallen. Ooh, tidy ups in its face, though. That's smart. That's you don't want to take uh, yep. stealth rock damage with Gouging Fire. That's the problem with playing slow into Chinchino. It, now the stealth rocks are gone, and so is the lander that set them in the first place. The show switches out to Chino now that's his job Ooh. going into Sleeping Primarina, which Marcus takes advantage of to set up a sword stance. Joe probably thought uh, Marcus was going to go for the kill, but. Opting to get the setup, trying to get the King Gambit sweep here. Yeah, interesting putting a, a fairy type into a King Gambit. <laughs> I'm surprised Marcus didn't sword dance again, to be honest. Yeah, and. And from Joe's perspective, it feels like Joe just kind of sacked per Marina there, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now there's Gouging Fire, which definitely likes this matchup, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah. The Sucker Punch coming in, though. Ooh. Oh, it didn't go for Burning Bulwark. But he crashed. Just yeah. shredding mm -hmm. through. Yeah, especially with the booster energy, giving it the Protosynthesis attack boost. Yeah, if Marcus went for that second Swords Dance, that picks up the KO, even in front of Gaijin Fire. Yeah, and yeah, Volcrona, I'd say, is definitely the safer switch than Garg in this situation. Yeah, it's a quiver Setting dance. up quiver dance. Exactly well. said that was the safest move there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he crashed yeah. just running through once again. Yeah, and, the, and the special defense doesn't even, like, come in as a factor there. Yeah, I think and if he Marcus already goes out. for the attack and there instead of the quiver sped. dance, he probably just takes care of the rest of the two. Yeah, because he already outsped, too. Mm -hmm. uh, with the tech, just get that extra turn in. Won't really do much, though, because... Yeah. Just survive to fight an extra turn. Yeah. I don't think Probably the get it. I... heal will do much with the... Yeah, no. Not into this attack boosted boost gouging point. fire. And gouging fire comes in later in the game and just... Sweeps through, picking up three, picking up a crucial three kills to give the drunken Dracovich the week one win. Yeah, once again we see a very close game where like two different decisions could have completely changed it. You know, if Marcus uh, goes for another Swords Dance, uh, Sucker Punch just kills everything. I don't know if Scyther's packing any like special moves that could outstall. Yeah, I mean, Gouging Fire would have been okayed by the Sucker Punch. Mm -hmm. And so would like the rest of his team, unless he was packing like some niche, like uh, non-attacking moves. Uh, even like a burning bulwark wouldn't do anything in front of Sucker Punch, it would just fail. Um, 
Yeah, and that's why I think, I mean, just gathering fire, especially if you're using a physical attacker, is so scary to be against, but Sucker Punch is such a good option to go into it, especially boosted. It's just unfortunate that it was just fell short of being able to, to do enough damage to take it out. Mm hmm Yeah, and on, and on Joe's team, Chinchino wasn't out for long, but it did its but it did its job well getting rid of the stealth rocks to let gouging fires gouging fire switch in. And again, getting rid of those stealth rocks that also so probably made the difference in gouging fire surviving that. <laughs> yeah, stealth rocks would have definitely done more than eleven percent. Oh, it for sure. Done yeah, like twenty five percent to it. Yeah, into a fire type, yeah. Right. And now we have one of the most exciting matchups in this season. And we have Hunt we have Hunter's Wayward Weaviles up against M's Baneful Bayonets. Two very, very strong teams here. We see Hunter coming in with with Weavile, Great Tusk, Iron Crown, Glygard, Raging Bolt, and Shrewdal. That's a couple of Terra Captains there, and and M goes in with the absolutely deadly duo of Gliscor and Iron Treads, followed by Iron Bundle, Latios, Salazzle, and Pikachu. Yeah, both teams are veritably scary in their own right. I know that I know that both players agreed to bring in their one pointers, being uh, Shrudel and Pikachu, respectively. Ah, uh, okay. Pikachu can do a lot with light especially ball. with Light Ball and Terra. Yeah, with Light Bolt and Terra, their Thunderbolts can rival that of Thunderous, which is really wow. scary if you think about it for too long. Yeah, that is a very terrifying statistic. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but Hunter also does have a couple ground types, though, with Gligar and Great Tusk. Yeah. Yeah, both teams are really powerful here. So... It'll be, I guess, a bit of a class of the Titans, if you want to put it that way. Although, I, I kind of like Hunter's advantage just in terms of, like, having... He has good hazard removal into the Gliscor, into a Gliscor team, which is very nice to have. Yeah, Tusk is arguably the best hazard removal in probably the game, but... For yeah, there's a reason it went first overall. Yeah. Yeah, and also Weavile just does pretty damn good into Gliscor, not being able to tear at all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's see how the the leads start. Here we go. This clash of the titans is beginning. Oh, Gligar. With, with Gligar coming out to lead, probably to set hazards into Pikachu. We are not getting Gligar versus Gliscor, unfortunately. The Pikachu fake out. goes for the immediate fake out, delaying the hazards a little bit, adding a bit of chip. Maybe he's scoping out for a Focus Ash? I'm not sure. And then Pika swaps out for Bundle right away. Right of Speed Iron Bundle here. Very scary. Yeah, with that booster energy. As Gligar goes Terra Water type. Terra Water is... Terra Water you'd think is good here. However, Bundle with a Stab Freeze Dry can kill whether you Terra or not. Yeah, and Knockoff just doesn't do much since the booster energy was used there. Yeah. There. But again, can't exactly predict that switch. I was just trying to get rid of that light ball on Pikachu, probably. Mm -hmm. But a good switch into Iron Crown there. There to eat up that freeze dry. Mmm, smart flip turn. You want to get out of there. Save Iron Bundle Getting for later. Getting rid of the Proto Speed is kind of interesting, but... Oh. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another Proto Speed. <laughs> and it... Takes a Tachyon Cutter like a champ. Yeah, Tachyon twice. Onto Iron Treads. <laughs> yeah, and Crown swaps back into the Water Terra Gligar. Yeah, a lot of switching and no hazards thrown out yet. Yeah. Ooh, but no more EVLI on Gligar. Yeah, and then Treads at speeds, but Ironhead's still not doing much into into that, even without the Evie light on. <laughs> yeah, just to resist. And he gets the flinch. 
But uh, Pikachu's in a very good situation now with the Water Terra. But Gligar sets up rocks. At long last, the hazards come in. <laughs> yeah, Salazzle's kind of not yeah, doing the so hot here. Yeah, just and the immediate the switch into Raging Bolt, which just really takes that Volt, volt Tackle well. Gligar definitely did not want to eat that. And Treads comes out, I'm assuming, to get rid of the Stealth Rocks. Ooh. Starting with the Draco. But Treads manages to survive. We're seeing a lot of switching so far in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And two Earthquakes from Iron Treads does manage to take down the Gligar. Netting us our first KO of the game. Yeah, both teams playing very defensively here. Ooh, but Weavile gets a free yeah. hit onto something. And it's the Iron Bundle. Yeah, I guess anticipating a nice tight move. Which does come in the form of Triple Axel. Even with Iron Bundle's frail defenses, it still takes that well. So Weavile pivots out to Crown. Which eats a 40% damage from Hydro Pump. Yeah, Bundle putting in some really valuable chip on Iron Crown here. Yeah. And then coming into Glide Score, which can... Pretty easily steal oh, the deal. Blocking the Volt yeah. switch. switch from Crown. Oh, very, very good switch with that flip turn. And there goes the Toxic Orb for Poison Heal. Psychic like it does doing decent a lot damage. There. Yeah, it deals good damage. But, but Gliscor will just be able to to saw that enough to heal back up. Yeah, of course. It is a Gliscor after all. I'm assuming Protect is probably coming next turn to get heal up. <laughs> Other than maybe switching into Treads, but it's not exactly safe against Weavile. Yep. Yeah, we do see the Protect coming out. Yeah, makes sense there. Is it like Protector going into Bundle or the options that would make the most sense? Mm -hmm. But Bundle already ate one Triple Axel. Yeah, and with Stealth Rocks, it might not live the next one. Ooh, Iron Treads yeah, coming out. Sacking Treads here. That's interesting. Oh, but he gets the Swords Dance! Good read. Good read for the Switch there. But, Weavile has Ice Shard. And down goes Treads. M loses their first Pokemon of the game. Here comes Bundle taking out Corvus. Yeah, it's definitely, his rocks there. he's definitely not going to live a triple axle here, or an ice shard for that matter. Yeah, a lot of these switches are starting to cost M, especially with the rocks still there. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't use. Tre I'm surprised Treads wasn't used to 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 remove the rocks at all. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he was even packing rapid spin. I guess we didn't see his last move. But no, but the KO. Latias Aura Sphere just outspeeds Weavile and just gets the Elko there. My it man, Shrudel coming in. Shrudel, which is not going to terrorize, that was already used on Gligar. Peep this though, peep so, this. What's he going to do? Sunny day? Oh. oh. Now he, now he can just get free there. Protosynthesis boost on both Great Tusk and Raging Bolt. Yeah, Let Shrudel cook. Funny day there. Yeah. And Shrudel survives with Sash, which just wasn't sure as to get that off pretty much. Oh. Endeavor! Endeavor! Did Shrudel, Shrudel get a priority move? It might. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Might. Oh, no. It doesn't. No. <laughs> At least not with uh, not, not an attacking one. <laughs> Not quite pulling off fear there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the tactic, but I am very afraid of that shrugle. Yeah. 
But now, yeah, Great Tusk is gonna get that Protosynthesis speed boost. And Raging Bolt's gonna get a boost when it, when it just has to come out, too. Well, he only has- As long as he's in the next two... couple turns, that's his, yeah. Yeah, Hunter only has two turns of sun left, and with that Protect, that just wasted one of them. Interesting that he went for Rapid Spin there. Yeah, I think he wanted to keep the speed boost and kind of snowball with Tusk here. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Slazzle goes down. That is only three three Pokemon left from M as the sun does fade, which yeah. does wear off the Protosynthesis, but the speed is still raised because of that rapid spin. The prize time with went with Pikachu here due to Latias kind of walling mm -hmm. both of Tusk's stabs. I guess fake out chip and do a switch out again, maybe, like we saw with the lead. Maybe, yeah. Oh, Electric Terra. Terra. Ah, uh, with the headlong rush. Yeah. Yeah, I guess get get the chip, and then you're forcing the the defense drop with great uh, headlong rush. Yeah, not really sh sure what the electric terror was really going to accomplish against Great Tusk and Raging Bolt, though. Yeah, I guess it's just kind of use the terror because if not, it's not going to get used anyways. I guess. Yeah. And now Bolt comes out to face Latios. Luster purge. I guess it, yeah, uh, not... great guess switch in. Yeah, it was a switch in there. As glass as Adnes switches in glass score. Ooh, Draco picks up the kill though. Yeah, yeah I but think that kind of seals the deal for him here. Yeah, Raging Bolt does have that special attack reduction, but the Latios has to deal with both. Not only that, but also Great Tusk as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's seemingly either scarfed or specs because. If not, there's no reason to switch out. So yeah. yeah. I could take out one, but not the other. There's Tusk, but Tusk goes down to the Luster Purge. Yeah, but now uh, Raging Bolt has its special attack stat back up, so... It's right there, yeah. likely one shot here. Yeah, for all we know, it could even just Thunderclap. Nah, Dragon resists Electric. It won. True, yeah. Yeah, probably just a Draco, yeah. And that'll do it in this just absolute nail biter of a of a game here. Yeah, the closest game we've had so far. Yeah, a six five win for Hunter in the Wayward Weaviles. Yeah, just imagine how differently it could have happened if any of those Dracos missed and then with the special defense drop, I mean it could have been possible Officer Purge could have pulled it out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, very close game, very back and forth between those two. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And even though Sun was running out probably faster than Hunter would have wanted, I I I like the move to go for the rapid spin to to just make that speed boost permanent. Mm -hmm. And nice, my first match is Jamez. We have Jamez versus Mike Jewel, the New York Glamets against the Long Island Gastrodons. Both New York themed teams. Teams, and we have J Maz bringing Hisuian Samurai, Dax Calibur, Iron Valiant, Zapdos, Chiyu, and Excadrill against Jewels, Brodom Wash, Walking Wake, Gastrodon, Blood Moon or Saluna, Hearth Flame Ogre Pond, and Toxtricity. I feel like these Pokemon are really good from Jewel's side. I mean, you could yeah. definitely run like some trick room. You could definitely run um, a rain dance thing going on. But we'll see what Jewel cooks up. Uh, yeah. And then J yeah. has Ceaseless Edge, Samurott, obviously one of the best uh, hazard setters. Uh, Iron Valiant, one of the best Pokemon in singles, period. Best Calibur is pretty good. Chiyu is banned normally, but Chiyu is chilling here. Uh, yeah, Chiyu is very good here. And then Excadrill. Yeah, I mean, I think D6 is pretty much most of what you could expect to see from Jamez, given how the draft went. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're kind of just going to let it rip. See what happens. Here we go. Hisuian Samurai and Toxtricity as the leads. 
And Samurai immediately switches into Excadrill. What a read there from Jamez! <laughs> <laughs> to eat up so that overdrive and set the box. <laughs> Get Jamez on Yeet Smash. Uh, wait, wrong game. Um. <laughs> uh, Yeet Mons? <laughs> And Earthquake gets the Oko onto the Toxtricity there. Yeah, Excadrill kind of walls Toxtricity completely, so yeah. I think it's to do it switch in there. You now the switch into Zapdos to go into Walking Wake. Ooh, I still takes over half off there. from Hydro yeah, Steam. Wow. And it's still at speed, so yeah, just two Hydro Steams and down goes Zapdos, and we're 1 1 just like that. It's an interesting switch out. Yeah, especially given the rocks. Yeah, and it's Ceaseless Edge. Tyron is ceaselessly edging on Ogre Pond here. And then he'll get a layer of spikes and no. then just get the kill of Aqua Jet. Yeah. Priority is just so important. Ooh, the miss. Very unfortunate miss by Jamez. Uh -huh. But the Ice Beam just is not going to do much. And that Ceaseless Edge makes his mark. That's two layers of spikes down. I am Where's surprised uh, Jewel is not terraing this Gastrodon. I am too. Ben, there's no more chance to do so as the next Ceaseless Edge hits, both picking up the KO and adding the third layer of Toxic Spikes. In for Freddy Fazbear! <laughs> Surprisingly a knockoff there and not a uh, yeah. knockjet, which but, honestly killed. Yeah, it may go down to Hyper Voice, but it did get rid of the Throat Spray, so there's no boost for the Ursa Luna there. Yeah. And thus, we see the end of Freddy. The washing machine is not sus. No, but it does take the special attack drop drop from <gasps> The Moon Pain Blast. Split! I love Pain Split! Yeah! <laughs> I see that I see that the Long Island Gastrods have won over the hearts of Armando. Yeah, Pain split him again. Do it. Get In that one percent. Get that one percent. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, th oh. Oh, the thermal exchange. The thermal exchange. Oh, you hate to see it. That would have been so smart if it wasn't back to <laughs> yeah. yeah. If it was any other strong physical attacker there. Pain split. Yeah. Getting that, getting back to full air at the team split, but I think yeah. they're not doing too much here. Three, four, five. That's probably loaded dice, Icicle Spear, if I had to guess. Yeah. And Volt Switch pivoting back into Wake here. Doing so much there, like taking out. Like, three layers of spikes, there. and Glaive Rush just does the rest for it. Yeah, Glade Rush will probably be used again here, and that'll most likely be game. Oh, nope. Icicle Spear. It didn't need to be Glade Rush, though. Icicle Spear yeah. will do the job. And the New York Glamets get their first win of the season. Yeah, honestly, but... I feel like Jewel's Pokemon were kind of set up for success. It's just, he kept switching in, like, bad Pokemon to switch in. Like, switching in Ogre Ponto, Water type. Yeah, then not having the Gastrodon, just going for Ice Beam into Hisui and Samurott there. Because, mm -hmm. like, Walking yeah. Wake kind of does numbers against this team. If Excalibur isn't set up with speed, you kind of just hit it with the Dragon move and you probably pick up the KO. Yeah, I mean, even with the type disadvantage, I mean, you saw what those Hydro teams did to Zapdos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just doing crazy damage left and right. It was most likely back if I'd have to assume, but... Even that, that would make sense, that yeah. Damage would, it, that Tiger Steam goes crazy on any member of JMS team not named Back Caliber. Yeah, hmm. and that's even without Rain or Sun being set up. Yeah. Walking Lake is just a really scary special threat. Yeah, and again, I just really want to appreciate JMS having the really good read into that toxicity to switch in Excadrill there. It's so true. Just peak in human intelligence. Okay, but pain split. Anyways. True. <laughs> Very true. I I'm not going to slow this one down, Daniel. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> yep. We have Judgment Day from Daniel featuring Masquerade, Meowscarada, Blastoise, 
Annihilate, Galarian Articuno, and Enamorous up against Big Ike fan Big Guy. It's Levin in the Ludicrous Lugias with Muse, Snorlax, Magmortar, Gardevoir, Monkey Dory, and Iron Hands. The Get ready to see a lot of metronome, people. And uh, a few other things. Yep. We'll put it at that. Yeah. Yeah, Skrain comes out against Biggie, just Piplup, up the Mew himself. Leading the Phantom webs. Force. The Phantom Force turn one. Unfortunately, that just allows a free quiver dance. And then Bug Buzz picks up the Oko. <laughs> Not Biggie, just Piplup. Out comes Monkey Dory, who speed falls to the sticky webs. And <laughs> Hurricane, soldier boy. Like, don't come out there. Don't go, soldier boy. Wario is here. <laughs> no, Wario. Don't do it, Wario. Oh, no. <laughs> Wario. Earthquake. Oh, no. Don't do it again, Wario. Survives the bug buzz. The resto chesto. Goes for resto chesto. <laughs> don't do it, Wario. Don't do it. Don't do it again. Oh, he's doing Hurricane. Yeah. Metronome gives thunder. Because uh, of the quiver dance, it doesn't do enough. And out comes the second no! one now. <laughs> and another earthquake! Yeah. And again! Yeah. <laughs> Pinchy the lobster! Stellar Terras! But that's not enough to withstand a two time special attack hurricane from Masquerade. Gardevoir lives the bug buzz, though. Gets off a metronome for guard split. <laughs> Averaging the defense and special defense stats. Come on, Dorito. <laughs> kill kill O'Brono. Oh, Iron Hands yeah! lives, but it's confused. But it's able to thunder punch through the confusion. Ned vs. Dorito picks up the KO. Let's go, Dorito. Oh. And then it goes down to Flower Trick. And that's yeah. the game. <laughs> it certainly was the game of all time. Okay, but I'm if Wario didn't... You, Daniel. <laughs> okay, okay. Whatever. <laughs> If Wario didn't click Earthquake twice, though, think about it. He could have taken down two <laughs> mons. Yeah. Yeah. I, if he didn't do Earthquake, I'm calling it if right now. That metronome was going to give him Blast Burn. <laughs> I don't even think Blast Burn can even be pulled from metronome. Can it not? I don't think Probably two turn can. moves can be pulled. But... Maybe yeah. I'm not. Uh, okay, we have given Flare Blitz then. Sure, yeah. <laughs> we will never know. <laughs> Until next week, but yeah. Big sad, big sad. Who's Levin could... facing next week? Uh, I will check later. Okay. Uh, Levin is facing Korra Sensei. Uh -oh. Ooh, okay. Speaking Sweet. of which, their match is in here. Rounding out week one, we have our final match. Skeletino and the Skeletor Superstars bringing Dragapult, Garchomp, Galarian Slowbro, Thunderous Therian, Tinkaton, and Skeledurge up against Korosense as Indiana Infernapes, not boasting their mascot, but instead bringing Orcaladon, Barrascuta, Pelipper, Scizor, Galvantula, and Donphan. And I don't know about you guys, but this Rain Team core really stands out to me. Yeah, Scizor kind of gets to ignore fire type attacks from Skeledurge because of the rain. Uh, Gavantula too. Uh, Donphan is just Donphan. He's just chilling. Uh, and obviously, Barrascuta gets fun rain time with Swift Swim and then Arcaladon. You know what Arcaladon does. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Arcaladon is so powerful in rain, it was just banned to Ubers recently. Yeah, our Caledon is a crazy threat. Yeah, I just love the that this is a team that has like such a clear plan with it. Mm -hmm. This rain yeah. team, yeah. And what are your thoughts on Skeletino's team here? The double dragon, the double pseudos, very strong. Uh, no fairies on the other side too, yeah. so they're not really too worried about anything other than like our Caledon or nice type move. Yeah, and the. Yeah. Yeah, and the Dragon Steel Fairy Core is well represented, represented on Skeletino, and I have Galarian Slow King. He has Galarian Slow Bro. I think I gotta root for him. <laughs> Slow Bro could definitely do numbers, but I feel like Thunder is kind of 
goes crazy here, especially with the the water types abundant. Yeah. You know, it hits a, a flying type move into Galvantula. Uh, they could be packing like Grass Knot or something for Dawn Fan. It's got the coverage for it. And Skeledurge kind of struggles here, mainly because of the rain. But if there isn't any yeah, rain, rain, it gets it a, lot. a couple KOs here. Against Arcaladon, Scizor, Capantula. So. Yeah. If Skeletino finds a way to remove the rain, Skeletino goes crazy here. But if not, it's going to struggle. And here we go. Our final match. As we see them leading with Terrafin the Garchomp alongside... Ramus the Don fan. Based Skylander name versus not a cringe mm. League of Legends name. <laughs> Ooh, the Ice Spinner doesn't pick up the KO. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Wow. Really and Ruskin plus Rocky, Rocky Helmet damage goes up. And Ruskin plus Rocky Helmet does go does go into Don fan. And Gortrump did get a layer of spikes off. But it doesn't matter. It might and, oh, a rapid spin. But take like fifty percent from just. <laughs> Were they speed tied? No. Because Gorchamp went first on turn one. Oh. Oh, they oh, yeah. they were. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh. Wow. Zapdos at home. Zapdos at home coming out against the Don fan. Which is an interesting matchup for it. But there's He's a grass knot you were talking about earlier, Armando. He's and we are why one. This is his home. And we are one one right away here. Hmm. Very Zapdos interesting. Zapdos at home putting up a better showing than actual Zapdos so far. I'd like to add. Mm -hmm. And the rain is set for Galvantula to come out against this Thunderous. Oh, but the crit Thunderbolt. It, it is to, to tank the crit Thunderbolt, though, it lost a lot of its health on that. Yeah. I'm honestly surprised Skeletino didn't pack Thunder just because of the rain team that is kind of being presented here. Yeah. Sticky webs are placed down now. Another KO, though. Zapdos at home going crazy. Yeah, did, you were spotlighted. You, you were spotlighting the the, the thunderous on the, on the team select screen, and it's really putting in its work here. Yeah, two thunderous KOs already, and not even taking any damage. Yeah, thunderous is really powerful, especially, but oh, it, yeah. But liquidation just okos from from Barascuda, one of my personal favorite Pokemon introduced in Gen Eight. This like this thing is very frail, but it is so fast and so strong, especially in the rain. Yeah, I guess not really yeah. fearing the KO kind of cost Galachino Thunders there. Maybe a switch out into Tinkaton or into Slowbro would have been better, saving Thunders for later. And Kudo did its job and switches in and switches out into Scizor now, but Tinkaton going Steel Terra. Ooh, something's getting bonked here. Ooh, thirty percent though. Gigaton Hammer. Not doing enough, under forty percent. Even with Steel Terra, just a bit over a third of its health there. Yeah. The protect. Oh my God, <laughs> this is genius. Protect Gigaton Hammer. I like it. I, I respect it, and it denies, and it denies the the pivot of U turn there too. And it stalls out the rain too. And it stalls. Yeah, that was. A, a yeah, really good I protect. See, uh, another Gigaton hammer here, and potentially, I'd have to assume probably Pelipper. Oh, oh no, it's wow. Arcaladon without the rain. Interesting. Oh, but the read. Stealth rocks. I thinking Pelipper was going to come in. Yeah, now it'll be a lot harder for Pelipper to come in. Hmm. I'm trying to see what Arcaladon does here, but that's kind of scary. Letting it maybe Iron Defense. Nope, goes for the Electro Shot. Yeah, it's not really matter here for Arcalon to use Electro Shot on the Yeah, protect. actually, that was kind of, that was really good, good timing of the Electro Shot into the Protect. Hmm. Yeah, the Charge Turn, just let it get that free special attack boost, and now... It'll still do, Gates yeah. are doing some damage, but Stamina just kind of boosting that defense, making it even bigger, or even harder to kill. Yeah, if, if I'm Skeletor here, I want to play the Skeletor without some while somehow trying to avoid Void Bane being set up. 
Yeah, yeah you probably bring in Skeledurge and you hit like Shadow Ball. Which is very tough. Fire, it... Assuming Pelipper comes in. Yeah, it, it, it is unfortunate that, 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 that Pelipper wasn't able to be, for Skeletino, that Pelipper wasn't able to be KO'd at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting thing to note about Unaware, though, is that even though uh, this Archalanon is using uh, Draco Meteor and its special attack is dropping, Belder is unaware of those special attack drops, so it's taking the exact same amount of damage Ooh. as it would on yeah. uh, plus zero. And it, go and, it and it goes down to Archalanon even without the rain. And out comes the Dragapult. Which would normally be faster than pretty much everything else, but the sticky webs are in effect here. But it does manage to live the Draco Meteor. Yeah, really crazy there. But Dragon Darts hitting twice, oh. boosting the stamina twice. And yeah, the stamina boost let it live even through that. As a switch into Slowbro, I do not think we are legally allowed to read out its name. <laughs> I don't think it's illegal sure to read out not. Piss Baby. I think it's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, but it's funny to think that it could be illegal. <laughs> the Piss Police is gonna get us. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> surprisingly switching out our channel on here, but... Yeah, setting, up, setting up the rain, points, I guess. So. Yeah, for differential, you want to keep it alive. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I'd say probably smells blood here. Ooh, the knockoff, smart. No more lefties. Yeah, it gets rid of. Gets rid of. It gets rid of the main recovery, unless it's running like slack off. Bell side arm hitting specially, dealing 45% into. into Pelipper, but it still lives and is getting its, its own heals off. And then it can U turn back into, like. Pretty much, uh, probably Scizor, I guess. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Ugh. Yeah, just Im completely immune to that shell side arm. Yeah, Scizor is probably gonna end up hitting it with a stab. Oh, knockoff. Uh, maybe predicting a, a switch. There, yeah. Yeah, and there's the slack off. Getting, giving Piss Baby a much needed heal. And look, if I guess just going for pure super effective damage. Yeah. And even with the the rain boost, that liquidation just not doing enough to Scizor. Yeah. And then one more knockoff just gets the KO, and all that's left is Dragapult to face four Pokemon with Sticky oh, Webs down. You know what? This thing might be banded. That's probably why it went for knockoff and not a bug type. Uh, so it can hit Dragapult. Yeah, that would make sense, yeah. Oh, but Dragon Darts picks up the but KO. Even yeah, still, it's. Yeah. Still out speeding, even despite the Sticky Web speed drop. That's just how fast Dragapult is. Now it only has three months to work through, but still in a very tough position. But those stealth rocks takes out a massive chunk of Pelipper's health, health leaving it with 2%. Yeah, that makes sense. And Dragapult so fast, it just finishes that off too. You suck it off so Barascudo kind of just wins the game here. Yeah. Yeah, because is not choice here. Mm -hmm. So it's not doing... It's not mm -hmm. going to choose any other move apart from Dragon Darts, and... Yeah, and also, anyway, I mean, Swift Swim Barrascuta will just outspeed a Sticky Web Dragapult. Yeah. Just no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And that's game. And that is week one of the Hoster yeah. Esports <laughs> Draft League. Of course, Sensei adding in, Archelodon deserved the ban, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, our challenge on is a lot in OU. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how differently that game goes if Skeletino does save Thunderous for later instead of leaving it in front of Barrascuta. Yeah, I'm guessing he probably didn't anticipate that liquidation just outcoing it. Yeah. Yeah. This thing Thunderous hits surprisingly hard. Frail though, so. You saw the type advantage, yeah. 
Yeah, I guess what would like the best switch in there have been? If I'd have uh, to I guess like Slowbro. Yeah, Tinkaton Tinkaton or Slowbro, Slowbro, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let's see. Let's see who's leading in kills. Uh... Yes, yeah, check out how our MVP race is looking just... after after our first week yeah. finish. Finishes in the Hofstra Esports Draft League. Seven X. Ex... Well, well, uh, six exciting games. <laughs> you know which one I'm referring to. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I kid, I kid. I don't. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, MVP race so far, Masquerade leading. A four differential. Yeah, different yeah. Five kills to, to, to one death. The, the extra kill giving it the tiebreaker over Espathra, also with a differential of four. Going four and oh. Mm -hmm. Then Joe's gouging fire. Fire put in three KOs without dying, and then my Metagross put in three KOs to to one death, and then we look at a bunch of things getting two KOs. Any surprises standing out here for you guys? Uh, Masquerade. Yeah. <laughs> Masquerade doesn't count. Okay. okay. <laughs> more work than I thought it would. <laughs> I wonder why, Daniel. No. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. I know Quiver Dance is powerful, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I picked up Masquerade for a reason, and it fulfilled that reason pretty well this game. So I'm happy by picking it. St it still couldn't stand up to the Dorito, though. Yeah, no. Madverse yeah, Dorito? But it did also kind of take down five other Pokemon. So yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit chipped. Just a bit. Okay, but Wario, Wario would have had Masquerade. But Wario's a little slow, okay? And I'm not talking about its speed stat. <laughs> but yeah, very fun week one. Hopefully we'll see some very interesting changes in the MVP race next week. Some interesting Pokemon getting some kills. But uh, only time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, I could... Definitely see. I could definitely see things like Weavile and Excadrill getting higher up there. Latios too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty crowded race, and how are the standings looking after the first after our first week? Obviously, it's like either one win or one loss, but with a differential tiebreaker, we'll see. We're seeing my two co-commentators, Daniel and Armando, at the top, both with a plus five differential, all on their wins. At the bottom, with the minus five in exchange, are Persona Fur and the Ludicrous Lugias. Yeah, but I can definitely I'm... see those teams bouncing back next week. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I, I myself am sitting just barely, barely outside the playoff picture with my minus two. But yeah, obviously these these stats will or these standings will be more varied. As the games yeah, go definitely. On. Yeah, well, yeah. Everyone more gets more matches in. Games. Yeah, and we'll have a much greater variety of records, and not just have everything based on differential. Yeah. Yeah, but that has been week one. Thank you, everybody, for for being here and watching. If you are, if not, well, we're here. And that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sticking around with us this week. Yeah, week one was a ton of fun. I'm very excited to see how, what happens in week two. All right. We'll see you with week two. Yep, this is Hot Street Esports Draft League signing off. <laughs>